Hi everyone, and welcome to video two of the Spectre TF build, or rebuild, should I say. Um, it's uh, 6th of February, 19. It's probably been a year since part one, which uh, has been a disgrace, to be honest. It should have been done last year, but um, there's always time and effort becomes very difficult, so... This is uh, this is just an update um, on the car so far. Uh, at the start of the year, I decided to take um, a week, maybe a week and a half, and I uh, tried to get everything sorted for the car. Um, unfortunately, uh, recently I've had to do some customer stuff and basically get the doors back open and and work away on them so um, it's gone the back burner for the last week or so maybe two weeks so but I thought I would just show you exactly what's happened um, and you seen from the last video everything was sort of sitting had it all engine all ready to go and a few other bits but um, this is uh, this is how we stand now so I have the full subframe built up the rear subframe with the engine installed everything uh, Everything that I could replace has been replaced. Um, I probably could have, other things I could have done, but I really think I've gone, uh, budget wise, I probably went over budget, but um, I want the thing to be right. I want it to be in the car and I don't want to have to touch it again. And that's that's really my plan. So uh, I'll talk you through it. It's, again, it's a 135 uh, TF 1.8. Um, I've re the, the engine's been fully rebuilt with N series parts, so uh, new liners, um, the N series bottom rail bolts and head gasket, uh, pistons, everything was bearings and all were replaced. The piston rings exactly all replaced and rebuilt. Um, I, I've I've put a new alternator. Well, refurbed alternator on. Uh, new clutch. New clutch hydraulics. Uh, the starter was redone as well. Um, I would have liked to change these uh, coolant pipes, but unfortunately, um, Xport weren't actually uh, didn't have them in stock at the time, which was quite annoying. So um, I wasn't able to change them. I maybe should have got them powder coated, but. At the time, I ran out of time. Again, uh, powder coating, talking about powder coating, uh, all these V bits were powder coated off the car, um, rear arms, and the subframe itself obviously was all done. Really good job. Guys in uh, Randall's Town, Premier Finish did mine, uh, all the bits and pieces done. Really, really good job. He uses, uh, since I've been going to him now, he's using. Um, this different powder coat, which is more designed towards cars, is a bit more pliable. It means uh, it means it won't, uh, you know, stone chips and stuff won't just completely wreck it straight away. It'll, there's a wee bit of a give to it to the paint, so hopefully it'll last a lot longer. We always, obviously the rear of a TEF gets a lot of abuse, so um, having something to protect the metal is a good job, especially the subframe. Um, all the bolts. Are replaced brand new every bolt in it except for a couple you know engine mount ones and stuff but everything else was replaced i had not export didn't have them all so i had to get some locally which uh there's a couple of high tensile ones here at the front subframe mounts and um a couple of other ones that i couldn't get but uh, i'm just glad everything's done i got the obviously the stainless steel mounts which uh, should last hopefully longer than the car all the arms were replaced. I went for the went for the front adjustables, uh, so I should be able to get the track in 100%. Um, uh, all the top mounts, uh, sorry, ball joints and stuff were replaced. I've went for the poly bushes as well, so the poly bushes there, and there's a couple others elsewhere, and uh, whatever ones I could get. Obviously the the rear anti-roll bar bushes and stuff will be put on as well. Uh, all these, all this, 
the rear tracking arms has been replaced with brand new and obviously I did the, the CV joints and wheel bearings were also done at the same time. Um, big shout out to Mike Sauter, he uh, showed me out with the bushes and a few other bits and pieces I have is upgraded gear linkages and a few other wee bits and pieces, really nice stuff they does. Um, Change these uh, these top top uh, bearings as well, which is a really must have. You, um, these should become quite sloppy, so really good to get them replaced. And uh, always change this bolt. This bolt it is uh, a nightmare to come out sometimes. And um, there's a lot of, as you see, there's a lot of stress on on it with the shock. Um, I would love to change the shocks to. Um, something a bit more fancier, but at the minute the budget just doesn't stretch. Um, in the future, I'd love to get Mike's uh, suspension set up from what I've read online and and people have fitted them. Looks a really nice setup, but that will come at some stage. So that's basically the rear subframe and the engine ready to go in. Um, I uh, I then moved on to the body, so. It's maybe hard to see from the camera angle, but basically the rear sections here, along here, uh, the bottom edge here, and the back edge, the full, the full back back panel here. Um, I uh, I uh, s removed all the paint. I then uh, seam sealed seam sealed this edge, and around these these things were around the the chassis struts here were. I had to repair these these mounts, so everything seems sealed there. I then uh, give it, I think it was two layers of red oxide, two layers of primer, grey primer, and then two layers of black. Uh, I can't remember what they call it. It's uh, I think it's. Uh, let's see. Yeah, anti anti gravel paint. I will probably. Uh, I'll probably give it a layer of wax oil as well while I'm while I'm here. So um, I know it's hard to see on the camera there, but it is. It's basically all done right through, uh, especially these areas here. And that's about it. I've have to finish off this. I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with it. There's um there's a couple of broken bolts and stuff in it, so I might have to take this off and uh, fix it and repair it, and then paint it up as well. I've got the other other bit over here. Um, so now the only thing really left to do before the engine goes is the brake pipes. As you see, I've got my uh, teeth piece here. Um, I was actually uh, quite put off because the car has ABS. Now, I didn't realize this before, but the the TF ABS setup, uh, for some reason, isn't the four independent wheels like most cars would be. It's, uh, it's only uh, independent front. And then there's one pipe runs from the ABS system down to the rear, so there's not really a proper ABS uh, to the rear brakes. It's only one pipe, and it, as you can see, it's teed off. So, not too sure how exactly that works. Um, um, if you had a really bad lockup, the rear end's not going to help you. It's, uh, it's basically going to lock both. It's going to try and use both rear wheels, which. Um, maybe maybe it doesn't use the rear. I'm not too sure, but um, it sort of threw me off when I when there's only one pipe in the car, and then because the car has ABS, but uh, just shows you uh, learn something new every day. So so that's the way we stand at the minute. That's uh, part two. I uh, like I say, I'm hoping to get the brake pipes done here this week and the engine in, and hopefully everything else is. I've got. I've got still bits here of um, a few options exhaust wise. I've got some spare uh, arms and stuff which I'll probably be selling off. I have a few other bits here that I power code to go on so they're just uh, mounts and stuff to go on. I've obviously got uh, some poly bushes still to go on and then I've got a new uh, radiator. Again, Mike Sauter sort me out for that. Very, very cheap aluminium radiator with uh, the upgraded pressure uh, Relief, sorry, not pressure. The the bleeding nipple on them, the stainless steel bleeding nipple, which is nice, and obviously uh, stainless steel coolant pipes, 
which will be nice. I'm still debating whether to do the PRT change. I see a lot of guys now doing um, the pressure relief. So I have a brand new one fitted. I did, uh, I did put a new one on as well. But I see a lot of guys now moving it to the front of the car, near the radiator. So not too sure. Uh, I guess in theory it should be a better job, but I'm just not 100% sure yet what I'm going to do. I have still got the, obviously got the option to do that. And I think you could probably do it when it's in the car. Obviously, it'll probably be a bit more awkward. Um, I have seemed to have lost uh, the EC and stuff, and obviously the keys and BC and stuff are still in the car. But I seem to have lost the engine EC. But um, that should be an issue. I should be able to program one in. No problem with the T4. Um, I am a bit worried about the front subframe and the front components, especially for MOT. The the car is rusty, but it's it seems to be more surface rust. I don't think it's actually structural. Well, I hope it's not anyway. I've, I've given things a good poke around and um, everything seems structurally sound. So hopefully, uh, obviously bushes and stuff maybe will need replaced, but I'm hoping that I can get through MOT and I get to drive the car this year and then maybe 12 months time next year I'll do a, re a refurb of the front end and then uh, I'll be happy then so um, that's the plan, the car is going to need obviously some work before um, before MOT um, interior needs all sorted out a few electrical things need sorted out but all in all I think mechanically the car will be pretty good Especially, uh, especially with the work I put into the rear end. So um, that'll do for part two. Uh, hopefully, you enjoy this. Um, I do have other things. I will be selling some cars this year. I have other cars that I haven't really shown yet, and these are things that I want to do. And it'd be nice to get them on the road. But that's from a lot of time. So. Enjoy, comments as always, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye.